So our first presenter is Dr. Robin Allison. He's the founding director of DesignFlow, um, a specialist water-sensitive urban design consultancy based in SA, Victoria, and also Queensland. Uh, he has more than 20 years experience in the stormwater management, uh, in stormwater management, and in particular integrating water-sensitive urban design into urban spaces to protect aquatic ecosystems, while also enhancing people's enjoyment and appreciation of water. And uh, Robin. Um, is joining us to describe the design response to convert the Oakland Parks Driver Education Center in a, into a stormwater harvesting facility integrated into a regional community park. So if you'll join me in welcoming uh, Robin up to the stage. Thanks, Ken. Good evening, everyone. Okay, um, so yeah, what I'll talk about um, this evening is really the journey of designing uh, what was an old driver's education center in the city of Marin uh, into a um, public park uh, as well as being a, a stormwater harvesting system. Um, and that stormwater harvesting is then used to irrigate, um, or it will be used to irrigate around 30 reserves around the city of Marin. So the site itself is, is down in the city of Marin, uh, not far from where we are now. Um, and this is what we started with uh, back in about 2011. Um, it used to be the old Department of Transport Driver Education Centre where little kids would go and learn about traffic rules and uh, how to give way at stop signs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you look at the characteristics of the site, which is shown here in the boundary, uh, about 40% of it was um, complete bitumen. Um, so not a lot of green infrastructure other than some fantastic... Um, remnant trees. This in a past life used to be the meandering Sturt River uh, that came through here uh, and then after some brilliant 1950s engineering it's a gun barrel straight trapezoidal channel that um, passes through the, um, uh, the site. So and the broader site includes a reserve to the south of here uh, which is the Oaklands Park Reserve um, which is separate to what was the, uh, the driver's centre. So that's the site we, we started with and what we're asked to do is a couple of things. Um, firstly, create some stormwater harvesting wetlands uh, to generate the water that we could inject into the aquifers underground that could then subsequently be used to be drawn out and irrigate the reserves around council uh, during the summer months. So we needed to harvest roughly between four and five um, hundred million litres of stormwater every year. Uh, we probably are not quite at that, but Glyn will um, talk about that next. Uh, and then we needed to deliver the ability to deliver 170 or so megalitres of water for irrigation around the, um, around the uh, municipality. Now, in addition to that, and this is what makes this project quite exciting from a design perspective, is there is also uh, the idea of integrating that stormwater harvesting system with a park upgrade. This is one of the most heavily visited um, parks in the city of Marion and it was quite degraded. The driver's education school had been shut down for many years uh, and it was a bit of a no man's land. The only reserve was down the back when you had to go past all this unused area. So what we really wanted to do was create a vibrant park and recreation um, scheme that just happened to be a functional um, stormwater harvesting facility, which is a long, it's a, it's a big step forward from stormwater harvesting in the um, sort of 80s and 90s in Adelaide, um, up north in Salisbury, where they even called these things water factories and they'd fence them off and there was no public interaction. So we were trying to buck that trend and very much make it about um, a place for the community as much as it was a functioning wetland system. 
One thing, and I'm just going to zip through this um, very quickly so we do have time for Q&A, but um, the site itself located here um, just off Oaklands Road um, has a stormwater catchment that's enormous, more than 6,000 hectares uh, that comes down through the Sturt River um, Canal or Colwood, if you like. And so after looking at um, the flow records for that channel, we discovered that there was so much water coming down, that would be the ideal opportunity to tap into, to draw off really as much water as we needed. So we're not supply limited at all, but what it meant is we had to pull out of the, the, uh, the stormwater channel, uh, and that involved therefore pumping water from the, um, the stormwater culvert uh, up into a wetland that we could then treat the system. And so that is a very different way of, of um, dealing with stormwater wetlands compared to a traditional wetland which is gravity driven. Uh, and then the levels are set because the water obviously has to flow continuously from the creek or waterway uh, into a wetland. So in this case, the decision was made pretty early on. We're going to be pumping from the, um, from the stormwater culvert. And what that allows us to do was to work very closely with the landscape design team to make sure the wetland could then in be integrated into the park. We had the flexibility of setting the levels of the wetland uh, and the shape and the way water was transferred around the, um, the park itself. So the next question is, well, how, how best could water complement the park and the park upgrade? Um, so City of Marion um, and the design team and I should acknowledge um, Taylor Cullery and Leth Lean were the landscape designers uh, and were very involved in the, the master planning of the park. And we had numerous community days, we had numerous sessions with um, council officers to determine the best sort of master plan. Um, ran through all of the desires for what, what could happen in this area and it ranged anything from a skate park through to uh, passive sort of uh, recreation and contemplative spaces. Um, went through and looked at what are the site features. There's some fantastic scar trees on the site. We met with Ghana people and talked about what they wanted to um, incorporate into the area. And really through all that stuff into the mix, there's also some um, cultural or European cultural heritage with old vineyards to the last of the area, uh, a Japanese garden and various other components that really needed to be thrown in the mix of developing a, an integrated plan for, uh, for the reserve. The master plan also import, importantly considered the whole park. So the plan I showed earlier of the driving school is just this northern portion. I should point out north is off to the left. Um, but the master plan looked at the whole reserve. So the Oaklands Park Reserve, which is tucked away, bordered by the Sturt River Canal, a railway line and existing suburbs. So really tucked away. So the master plan considered how can we open that up to uh, the users of the park. Um, then we looked at what are the assets we want to keep, uh, what are some things that can maybe get, be moved. I won't go through all the details. A couple of the interesting ones was the round building. Um, if anyone knows the site, was an imperative we needed to keep. And I think three years after we built the wetland council then tore it down. So you could sit back and go, why does the, the wetland do that funny shape there? But anyway. And that then distilled, was distilled down into a master plan that really came up with um, three components was passive recreation, the active, more urban recreation, and then the more nature-based um, activities. And that led us to a master plan that was really divided um, through the middle with the more active spaces on the, the eastern side, the more nature-based on the um, western side, and then the more urban activities adjacent to the, um, the main road going past. And that then set the template for how we could investigate how can a wetland complement those, those uses. Um, and in fact, some of the edge treatments to the wetland were different depending on which zone in the, in the master plan it, um, it fell. So there's a very detailed master plan and something that, that Glenn might talk about uh, in a moment. So our focus was really on this northern half and then the master plan covered, as I mentioned, the southern half which includes to an, uh, an option to increase the stormwater harvesting in the future if there's uh, increased demands. So that set the framework for what we were going to do. Um, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, that we made the decision to pump from uh, the Sturt River. 
and that gives us an ability to really just pump out as much water as we want and we can set up what's called a constant flow wetland. So we don't have big level variations that you do in, in gravity fed wetlands and it gave us a lot of flexibility in terms of setting the, le the levels of the wetland and we could be driven by the, the landscape master plan. So then we went through a design session and um, you know, there's many of these sort of yellow trace scratches all through the office. Obviously the, the big trees were an important asset we wanted to keep that we worked around. And in order to do that, we wanted to set the earthworks levels uh, at the right spot so we didn't have deep excavation right next to some of these trees so we could keep a lot of the trees. And then I don't know how, but it turned out looking a, a little bit like a, um, a python. Um, that's just the bathymetry and you can see through here sort of deeper pools and then shallow vegetated marshes into deeper pools as you travel your way down from the top here down to the bottom. So the way it works, um, basically we have a, a rack in the, the Sturt Channel which pumps water up through a gross pollutant trap to take the litter and coarse sediments out. That then transfers from gravity from this point into the inlet pond of the wetland. Uh, it splits flows two ways and the purpose of that was so we could maintain these existing trees and then flows all the way down to the bottom, passing through these vegetated areas of, of shallow uh, marsh species of, of plants. Um, another couple of features which were put into it was to, to try and get the wetland to sit well in the landscape was to vary the level um, of the wetlands and that involved incorporating a couple of drop structures, the various components, and we'll see some pictures of that at the moment. That could also then introduce some more um, interest in terms of the landscape design. What we then do is at the downstream end um, is an offtake point and we can there take the water that's been treated uh, and then pump it to uh, injection wells. So wells that go down, I'm trying to remember, about 120 metres, is that right Glenn? Um, at different locations around the reserve. Uh, and so that during the winter harvesting scheme, we can inject water into the aquifer, as, a, as we mentioned, and then in summer, pull that water back out, uh, put it through a, a tank and a, and a pump network, and then send it through the, the suburbs of, um, of Marion to irrigate their reserves. The other thing that was done is an ability to expand the system, as I mentioned, and the well locations allow for future wells to come in down further. Uh, so they have um, sufficient spacing between them so you don't get interaction between the different wells. And the pump stations here, uh, maybe Glenn might talk about them a little bit more, but basically they service two reticulation routes. Uh, and basically, just to get your heads around this, um, this is orientated with north coming out this way, Oakland's Park here, and there's a network that heads, heads north, in other words, downhill, and then there's a network that goes the other way, following the Sturt River Channel, um, servicing the reserves and potentially expanding later on to take water to um, the Tonsley development and maybe even as far as Flinders University that Glenn might, uh, might mention. So just a couple of the features. You can see here, this is the, the wetland with two arms at the top end. And these were the trees that we were trying to retain. Um, and you can see how close the water level is to the natural ground level. So we didn't have deep excavations. Um, and if we did have deep excavations, then these tree roots would be in trouble. So one of the great things about uh, this reserve, because we could pump the water and have the, the luxury of um, setting the levels, is that it, it, from day one, it had mature trees throughout it. Um, and all the bitumen was gone. We also had fairly mild batter slopes and we did a different treatment from the eastern side, which is more urban activities, to the western side, which is more nature-based, and there was a lot of um, replanting going, which continues to go on. And this was just a feature that was introduced, uh, a cascade halfway down, um, servicing, serving the function of, as I said, balancing the, those earthworks levels, but also creating a bit of a feature where you have these stepping stones where kids can sort of do nature play and go across the water and you can see the active movement of water flowing through the, the wetland system itself. 
other sort of landscape features that were introduced, um, the sort of wiggly bridges and walking paths all throughout the reserve. Um, there's another footbridge which allows people to get close to the water but not really interact with it. Um, some of the challenges with stormwater wetlands a lot is, is bird life and, and um, people's dogs. So you want people to get close to the water but you don't really want them into it. And that I'm sure is a continuing uh, um, challenge in terms of keeping people and their dogs out of the water and um, damaging the plants and creating turbidity and so on. And the other thing I, I think which is great for this project is that, and Glenn might be able to talk about the funding, but it was a project that was funded by the council, by the state government and from federal government money. So the council got a great return on investment is that now that it's got a head of steam, it can, it's then been used as, for leverage to get further funding for the reserve. So since the wetlands been built, there's since been a, a skate park out the front. Uh, and then there's other infrastructure, which is now getting upgraded at, um, throughout the reserve. And so I'll leave it there and hand over to Glyn to talk about whatever he's going to talk about. Thank you very much.